All right, so um, I'm uh, I'm in freaking Amsterdam. I'm trying not to get hit, but um, I want to talk to you guys about uh, the seminar that I put on. And uh, sun's in my eyes. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys about the seminar that I put on because it's pretty fantastic. And um, I love being in this square. It's really, really cool. But, so I, I'm in Amsterdam, which is kind of like the vacation away from Sweden because I worked so hard. I barely got any sleep uh, to put this thing together. And it was amazing because we really kind of talked about what the difference is between low carb, high fat, and keto. So I think I'm just gonna summarize what that content was about as I stand in this very famous square in Amsterdam. Okay, so uh, what's the difference between the two? Well, with a low carb, high fat protocol, which is what they call in Sweden, LCHOF, which is what they call the Banting diet in Australia and in South Africa, <laughs> I'm laughing because I like in just a short amount of time I have been running around trains, planes, automobiles going 100 miles an hour. But the whole point is look at that square down there. Pretty cool, right? Um, the whole point is is that um, when you do a low carb high fat protocol, you're not actually using ketones. I just dropped my glasses. You're just doing low carb high fat, and you really, 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 really want to do. If you want to do ketogenic protocol, you've actually got to up your fat to about 200 grams of fat. So that was the big subject during the low carb, high fat versus keto seminar that I did in Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, it was very interesting, their questions of like, well, the kind of stuff that I already talk about, like how long does it take for you to actually keto adapt? You know, what about the quality of meat? These tranquilizers are pretty cool. Um, what about the uh, quality of meats? Does it matter? And it, it kind of does because we were talking about if there were local farms around or you know the fact that Europe is such like a cheese and dairy country. Is it okay to have milk or yogurt or keeper? We, we, we also talked about kimchi and kombucha and we talked about putting in probiotic type of fermented foods while you have an overgrowth of candida and how that could be probably a bad idea. And just really trying to understand like what is ketogenesis? Can you be an athlete on keto? Can you do explosive exercise? Can you be a hockey player? Because hockey is so uh, popular in Europe. Um, so that's what we actually spoke about. Yes, you can do explos explosive training. It takes a while to actually get through those three month chunks of adapting. Uh, also, as you guys know, that cheese has casein and uh, whey and protein, whey protein and casein, which is, is an allergen to the body. Uh, we also talked about uh, just a lot of things, like how do you measure your food? You know, I was trying to explain my uh, finger example, you know, two ounces or 50 grams in weight, three ounces, 75 grams in weight for those who are trying to finger, or for guys, four to five fingers, or four to five ounces, or 100 to 125 grams in weight, not total protein, um, we're talking about protein. So we're talking about measuring things, like how do you measure it, because we're, in Europe we're using kilograms, and we're using milliliters and whatnot. Uh, but it was really amazing to see that even in Sweden, people were so excited to learn more about the benefits of keto. And it really shows me that I can actually take this around the world, and make it fantastic and really because somebody also mentioned on my Instagram how can you travel around the world it's just that's my that's my thing I love to travel so I'm going to manifest what I love most and that's going to put me in a homeostatic balance which is another ironically it was another part of the conversation at the seminar it's just that keto is so much about what you think if you think that you're limited in your food you're limited in your food if you think that you know, you'd have to recycle or refeed, which is not ketogenic, then you probably would. Um, if you think it's so difficult or you have difficulties with digesting, that's another thing that if, can you do keto without a gallbladder? Yes, yes you can. You have to use ox bile salt and probably some detailed HCL and chew your food slowly. We talked about uh, those symptoms, but you can do it. It feels difficult, but it really isn't. 
So I was just doing a little snippet highlights of how amazing it was and people were so kind. So those out there who went and came to my event, thank you so, so much. And the next one is in New York, be looking out. The background will no longer be Amsterdam. This is actually the vacation from Sweden, uh, being in Amsterdam, which I freaking love. I used to live here actually in the Sumatra Strat area. Can't remember Dutch to save my life, but somehow I remember Swedish. Uh, if you guys want to learn more, the importance of your keto adaptation or really the difference between just doing low carb high fat, which does regulate your insulin, which also was a part of the conversation, how to regulate your insulin, but even your insulin can spike. You can have an insulinogenic effect on keto when done incorrectly. Just because you do low carb high fat does not mean that you are getting rid of your diabetes. If you can actually keto adapt, that's how you do it. So to learn more, uh, you can go to stephanieperson.com for my New York event. I'm also doing live webinars. It was the first time I streamed live. People seem to love it, so I'm really excited about that. You can go, you can go to Stephanie the Business Person on my Facebook fan page. That was kind of a mumble, right? Stephanie the Business Person on my Facebook fan page, or Stephanie Ketogenic on my Instagrammy, or Stephanie, what, Steph the Business on my Periscope. I should do Periscope. I think I'm gonna do Periscope. And I'm about to peace out. Peace.